Uh, good day, everybody. Uh, so, so glad you could um, join us today for this lovely discussion with Oya Media Group. Uh, my name is Tara Taylor. I'm a festival director with Emerging Lens Cultural Film Festival. And with me on this panel today is Alison Duke and Gaddy Conte George. Hello, ladies. Hi, <laughs> thanks for having us. Hi. Hi, awesome, thank nice. you for being here. So I just wanted to give a little bit of your bio because I mean, your past work and current Mr. Jane Finch has is quite, quite amazing and um, quite a, you've quite accomplished quite a lot and it's uh, very inspiring. Um, so Oya Media Group brings a genuine black Canadian perspective to media platforms, sharing socially relevant and life-changing stories that celebrate black experiences. Um, and I mean, that's just a little bit. <laughs> So well said, though. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So, would you mind just um, telling us, like, um, how did Oya Media Group come together? Yeah. Well, you know, it's sort of like you know, Gaddy and I have been seeing each other in the film and television industry. I knew of uh, Gaddy as an editor, um, and she used to work at Chum Television, and I was a producer at Chum Television. I think she came in after me, but you know, you're always on the lookout for you know new talent. And for me, I, I love working with with black female filmmakers. So I was looking for you know new talent, and I I think we we first kind of like creatively um, crossed paths when um, Gaddy was doing her first feature documentary. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. and that was the Flying Stars. Yeah. yeah, Flying Stars, Allison. Yeah, so uh, I was, um, we were in post production and we had asked various um, people in the industry um, who to be able to consult and give us notes on um, our rough cuts. And Allison was one of the people that, um, that was generous with her time and, and did so. And I always remembered that as like, I found her notes and feedback um, you know, very profound, very layered, and really, really helped us um, shape the film. And so I, you know, and I knew I wanted to work with Allison. I mean, even before that, I knew I wanted to work with Allison. You know, back in the, the days, I mean, Allison is very humble, uh, very humble person. But you know, Allison, her reputation precedes her. You know, she's a badass producer. Back in the yeah. day, in the, you know, the late '90s, you know, uh, producing like all the the music, the hip hop music videos you know, in the city in Toronto, kind of really helping to establish that hip hop scene um, in Canada. And, you know, so Allison was like a, you know, uh, you know, a, 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 a big part of that scene. And so yeah. I knew her from those days. And so, and that's back, back when I was in film school. So I knew back then, I'm like, when I, at some point in my career, I'm going to work with this woman. <laughs> um, and so in my first feature, I, we, we reached out to her and we, we had that. And then a few years later, um, Allison uh, was um, an executive producer on a project, the Kua Benjamin Legacy Project, which was a, uh, a series of short films honoring the legacy of uh, Black Canadian activists. And um, Allison put together the, the, you know, the visionary that she has put together a group of Black women filmmakers uh, to direct the documentaries, and um, I was one of them. And so that was our first um, kind of collaboration. And um, and then kind of like, I don't know if the rest is history or um, that was, uh, yeah. So history is still that, happening. It's still, still happening, happening. Still, 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 still creating, yeah. yeah. That's lovely. So um, what do you feel is, um, I guess I wanna know the, the difference from working um, maybe even uh, their heritages, you know, why was it important for you to work with black, a black female filmmaker? You know, why, why is that so strong and so, and so important to you, Allison? Oh yeah, it, that's a great question. You know, for me working with black filmmakers, there's sort of like a, a shorthand in terms of the history and the context um, to a lot of the stories that we want to tell or a lot of stories that I want to tell. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's, you know, it, it eliminates that explanation of, yes. you know, oppression or immigration or, um, you know, uh, generational living in in Canada, um, in a black community. Like you kind of know that history because you're from the community. So, yeah. you know, so it's sort of like, you don't have to do that part really so much. And, and, and also there's a, you know, there's something about like, 
um, like a sisterhood, you know, connecting yeah. with <laughs> with other Black female filmmakers who, um, you know, you can kind of grow in the industry and learn the tech side and the, you know, the you know the the writing side, the producing side. It's nice to see, you know, you represented, you know, behind the camera and in front of the camera as well. Yes. So it it seems to me, um, just you guys give off the aura of like mentor mentee and now partnership, and you know, it just it seemed like it was a natural flow into your current and um, updated work working situation. And so, does it feel like that? Like you finally kind of like met the, came to the heights of like working with a, like a mentor in the field and you know like well how does that feel like I have so many mentors I'm like if I could actually ever get to work with one of them <laughs> let alone well, have a company together <laughs> I do have to jump in because you know Gaddy is also very modest she is a kick-ass can I say kick-ass um editor you know by nature wow. so it was almost um not so much mentorish, you know, mentor oh. <laughs> mentee relationship, but it's someone, you know, Gaddy was someone who I respected her craft. Um, she was Absolutely. also doing this kind of the same thing. We both had our own companies. She had Metro Metro Media, and I had Goldilocks Productions, and we're basically doing the same things, you know, writing, producing, and and editing our like work. Um, and so it was sort of like, you know. Um, you know, especially with Mr. Jane and Finch, why don't we just actually formally come together and have a company so that we're not duplicating things and, you know, we're stronger together. And that's sort of, sort of yes. our model, model is going for, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And I, I heard you mention um, sisterhood and that bond and that kind of thing and other sectors and just other parts of our lives. That's what we strive for in, in our own situation here at Merging Lens. You know, my, my I call it a happy marriage with my um, vice chair, Shelly, and she's she's uh, my strong tower, and you know the things that I don't want to do, <laughs> she does, and vice versa. So it works. <laughs> this is this is so great. Congratulations on on um, a company that's just making a mark. And so, Mr. Jane and Finch, <laughs> beautiful, beautiful film. Congratulations on the two uh, Canadian Screen Arts um, Awards, the Donald Britton Award for Best social, political documentary, and best writing. How does it feel, to, first of all, to just even have that continued success and just that recognition? It, it's, it's, it feels great. It feels great, you know, like it, um, you know, it's, it's, it, we, you know, we, we won the award last May or we were, you know, um, uh, we were selected for the award last May and it's still, you know, it's, it's, it's sunken in and it, you know, it feels real, but there's still a part of it, you know, cause it's, I, I don't do these things for the awards, you know, and I, I do these things for the community and for taking up space in this industry and um, making sure that our stories contribute to the um, Canadian narrative and Canadian history and our, our, our um, you know, the, the media landscape that, you know, our, our voice is so often devoid from. And um, so to be recognized from an industry that you're often ignored, you're often overlooked, you're often over questioned, um, it, it feels good. You know, it's kind of just like that, um, that extra stamp of just, yeah, you're, do you're doing something right. Um, and uh, it's, I think it's really special because this is our first official uh, project under Oya Media Group. Um, so it's kind of like, yeah, you're really doing something right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Tara, we didn't expect it. Like, we were just so happy to be nominated. And we were like sitting there. There's a video online on our, on our Facebook page with us like, sitting there, like watching the awards ceremony what? with our staff. And then when it was announced, it's just ballistic. I don't know. I look back at the video and I'm like, For oh real. My gosh, I was a little too excited there. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a little party and get nice. happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's completely beautiful. Unexpected. Completely, yeah, yeah. I think the, the nomination was enough. Like we were happy. We were happy with the nomination. You know, and yeah. then like during the award, I was happy they pronounced my name correctly. Like <laughs> that was it. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, but to, to yeah, to actually win, you know, and you know, to be recognized, and you know, with all our peers and all the other nominees, you know, it's just yeah. um, great, great to to receive those honors. Yeah. Yes. And can you tell us a bit about um, even um, in the space of interviewing and filming and following Mr. Jane and Finch? First of all, where the name come from? Did he was was he given that title like just through the community or and you just said it's got to be that title because this is who this man is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, at first I was resistant to that title. <laughs> 
Um, but because originally the film wasn't about um, Mr. The Rose in the community. So the film is about Mr. The Rose, uh, Winston The Rose, who is a um, activist. He's an, an 80 year old activist who is is um who's been act who's been in the community of jane and finch for you know the past 25 years advocating for that community but my introduction to him wasn't through that lens my introduction to him was through the lens of his archive so a mutual friend introduced us uh, because he had been filming the black community um, in canada and also the black experience around the world for the past 50 years and um, after doing the, the Kua Benjamin Legacy Project with Allison, where, where um, the, what the documentary I did was on Dudley Laws, um, you know, you know a Canadian activist, a prolific Canadian activist, uh, and the footage I used in the film, um, a, a friend said, you know, there's someone I want you to meet who has more footage that would have been perfect for your documentary. Yeah. You know, and so, so I, you know, I, I met that Mr. Hurt. The Rose and, um, yeah, and then, and then, you know, I saw a little bit of his footage and was like, wow, if I had met him while we were doing that documentary, wow. not just for my film, but then also the other um, filmmakers and, and the activists that they featured, he had all of them in, in, oh. in their footage and all these activists are no longer with us. So it's, wow. you know, this footage is yeah. precious. Gold. And so <laughs> exactly gold. So it was a gold mine. He came with a stack of like, he copied a lot of his footage onto DVDs for, for um, storage purposes. And so I was just flipping through the DVDs and seeing all these names, Charles Roach and the Million Man March, March. and wow. you know, all, all oh these goodness. historic moments in, 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 in our history. And I just was like, wow. And so as I was starting to get to know him and just spending time with him and um, going up to his offices in the Jane and Finch community, I would walk down the street with him and he would get stopped every two seconds. Mr. The Rose, Mr. The Rose, oh, hi, Mr. The Rose, you know, and, and the scene how like he was just a man embedded in this community. He was a man who was beloved by this community. And that was a nickname he had, Mr. Jane and Finch. So it was just... It was organic, um, uh, an organic process of even coming to that being the focus of the story and then that becoming the name of the film. Wow. And for people who don't know, um, Jane and Finch is an intersection, Jane Street and Finch Avenue. And it's an area in Toronto that's been marginalized for years because of the high immigrant popula population, the high black <laughs> population. And so, you know, and, and the lack like, of community and, services and, and, the lack of, and social services in that community and the lack and uh, the poor city planning of the, you know, the accelerated growth of as that community grew, the social supports of that community did not grow with the pace of population, which led to, um, you know, the social situation that you find in that community today. Wow. Yeah. Over, over policing, like it's just, yeah all those thank issues you. yeah thank you for uh, describing it else in the way that you did because one one term that i am so tired of hearing is high density population <laughs> what does that actually mean <laughs> you know so it seems to be the only term described to use black neighborhoods and immigrant neighborhoods and so i i do thank you that's very important the way that you you describe that um so i i do i remember from the film and just hearing you talk that Mr. LaRose was an activist, 80 year old activist. And then um, some, I don't remember who said it in the film, but they said, so you're taking off your activist hat and putting on your political hat. So I, I wonder, do you think that the activism hat and the political hat should be one and the same to initiate real change? You know, like don't take off that hat, just add the, pol the political hat on. You know, it just kind of makes me think that maybe the activism needs to come into politics to really initiate real change? What do you think about that? I, I, I think that's a great question. Like I look at people now, um, like the younger politicians, especially in the States, like the AOCs and that whole, that whole group of women, right? Um, and they're clearly activists and, and politicians. Yeah. And I think the one, be, like the one amazing thing about the film is that we, we pose those questions to the audience, right? Uh, and that's why that, you know, that lady in that, um, you know, when they're trying to decide which what what he was going to do, was he going to be a school trustee or was he going to run as a M, uh, MPP or you know councillor, city councillor, you know, that was posed because you know why do we have to choose one over the other, 
right? Um, and so it was interesting to see how sometimes there's tension between the two that you can't reconcile just because the way our political system is. Um, you have to fundraise, you have to get bring money, you have to you have to do all these things that is so different from the kind of activism that um, you know Winston LaRose actually does, which is you know the one-on-one -on -one type of exit, um, activism, helping you know your fellow um, community member or neighbor, um, and he needs to be in his office and and meeting these people every day and not necessarily asking them for money because they're already you know disenfranchised or maybe they don't have the resources. So there's a disconnect in our political system, and you think that someone like Mr. LaRose um, would be someone who we want in in city hall fighting for his neighborhood because he he, he cares mm -hmm. you know yes my god getty did you want to <laughs> speak on that yeah, i think i think allison said it well you know it's <laughs> it, it truly is it, it should be ideally in an ideal world you should be able to put on those two hats i mean mm -hmm. politicians should be activists right the whole point of politicians are to represent the people and to serve um, on our behalf, which is really, that's, that's what activism is, um, you know, but I guess, you know, well, in my, my rose, you know, when I put on my rose colored glasses, <laughs> that's what it is, right? But in reality, you know, then I think that's, that, that's, that's one of the beauties of the film is to show you the, that, that, that reality. Yeah, my goodness. I, I think of, um, of uh, the politicians today, and it's, that's why I think that's why it came it came for me, you know, thinking about the activism of it, because the way that we used to fight way back when is just not the way we fight anymore. Like it's it's sad to say that sometimes we give up. And just seeing, especially the scene of him getting ready to run that race with those three different generations, mm -hmm. that's really extremely important to see, continue seeing those role models. And then when you feel like you want to give up and you see something like this, that's I, that's why I believe your film is just number one, beautiful, just gorgeous, 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 but just so important for, for young folk to see and folks going into that. Like what, what do you overall, what do you feel um, that the, me the overall mess overall message, a few different messages, it's 45 minutes long, will speak to folks, you know, what are the kind of things you think they'll take away from it after seeing it? Um, I mean, I think there's, there's so much to take away. Um, but I think like the one easy thing and um, which is, you know, why we included it is it, it, like at 80 years old <laughs> to pick up, warm up, get on a track and run that hundred meter race. Like, <laughs> You know, it says so much. It says so much more than just running that race. You know, it's just like, look at this man. He has that energy. He has this drive, and he gets up and he does it. And he gets up and he does it every day, and he doesn't stop. You know, mm. it's like you know, just you can find that in yourself. You know, and um, you know, and he, he's a, a motivating factor for me. And to see that, you know, and to run with him. You know, it's not. It's not like I. I. I'm a former track and field athlete <laughs> and um i filmed him running that race for two years and then the the next year after i joined him and i ran that race Ooh, wonderful because <laughs> i finally I... didn't have to worry about filming and that wasn't easy <laughs> did you beat him no <laughs> i would say not we tied we tied oh, and wow. i warmed up <laughs> and get is a former track star <laughs> So, like, yeah, man, like, it's just, I, I, I only hope that I have that much energy um, for life, energy for my community, and um, yes. just energy when I am 80 years old, and I am still doing it like, yeah. like he is. That's beautiful, beautiful. And I mean, another thing I wanted to, um, I guess, shed light on is the, you know, of course, we're in this new um, Black Lives Movement um the climate and just kind of asking you both, where do you feel things are headed for the future for black filmmakers? Um, you know, I see a lot of, sometimes I see a gap. So I see that um, there's some more 
crew work and maybe some more acting roles may open up and that kind of thing. But then there's a gap and the lack of numbers. So my mind automatically goes to maybe we should be training more folks. So what do you feel like on the side of in the film industry, the future for black filmmakers and especially black female um, filmmakers? That's a great question. Um, well, we're seeing a large impact here in Ontario and in Toronto specifically, because you know we have a high um, percentage of the Black po uh, Canadian population. I think sixty percent of the Canadian Black population is in in Toronto or Ontario. So we're seeing a lot of um, growth um, in terms of and development of Black filmmakers. Uh, there's there's many programs here now. Uh, that have started up. Uh, we have a program called the OYA Emerging Filmmakers Program. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we were uh, supported by the Ministry of Children, Community and Social Services to provide a space for Black youth who had graduated from film, television, or digital media to um, programs, post-secondary programs, to, um, to have a, a space where they can grow and figure out what their career trajectory is going to be, and um, and so you know you know we've and and we and we did it you know just sort of like organically because when we saw um, Mr. Jane and Finch um, was such a community film and it was so much about our history and it was so intergenerational in terms of the messaging and all that we thought we need to have Black youth working on this as well. Mm -hmm. um, behind the scenes and then, you know, hire them and train them. So yeah, we, we started that, pro that program and then we sort of integrated, like, I think it was five or six black youth worked on that film. Mm -hmm. And, um, our intention was like, you know, building our program alongside our production company was that we wanted to show people that you can employ black youth and not diminish the quality of your of the work that you're putting out there yeah. especially you know yeah. black youth who've gone to school for film and television and they have the skills but they just need maybe sort of like the soft skills or understanding how you need to be in this industry which is a very very difficult challenging um industry to be in um everything is really fast and there's high expectations and there's a sort of like the unspoken code of how to be as a person. So we kind of support them in that growth. And, and there's other, there's other um, initiatives um, that are in Toronto too for black folks specifically like um, black women film and, and there's others that are, you know, and that's been around, I think they started before us, but there, and we're part of it as mentors, but there's a lot of programs going on in, in Ontario. And so I think I'm hoping that with all of these initiatives um, happening, that the future is a, is a lot more brighter than it was for us. Like I've been in the film industry for like 20, 25 years, over 20 years. And it was such a, you know, as a black woman and queer woman, um, you know, it was really hard. You know, we had, I had people on set um, who wouldn't, or I had worked with people who wouldn't bring the right equipment to set or, wouldn't want to listen to me as a director when I started out mm -hmm. and now mm -hmm. it's it's totally different mm -hmm. wow wow yeah. movements yeah. on all fronts yeah yeah and I would just add to that you know like um you know we're in our, th our third year of our program now you know and it's just been incredible to see the growth of these young people and um to see kind of where some of their like are the of some of the ones from like our first year um now you know they've been uh, you know, out in the industry now for a few years now, and just to see the growth, um, like one, we have one participant who wrote his first feature film that premiered at a festival last week, and you know we're seeing them move on to um, other projects and and other great opportunities. So it's, um, you know, like when we started it three years ago, you know it was it was tough to you know sometimes bring partners on board, and now that everyone's kind of had this racial awakening, you know the there, there, there's a lot more buy-in to what we what we were trying to do. So we're happy to see that the industry is starting to catch up to kind of what we have already seen. And I'm <laughs> sure many in our community have been seen for years. Mm -hmm. um, but just, um, the, uh, I think the other aspect of that is just kind of 
like we definitely need that emerging talent to to rise up and 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 grow in the community but also this industry needs to um, look at those who've been in the industry you know i've worked in this industry for almost 20 years now and you know it's been a struggle it's been a struggle i feel like where i'm at when I started in this in this industry, where I'm at now is where I wanted to be ten years ago. Yeah, you know, and you know, there's been, you know, there was you know, so many barriers and so many things um, I look back at, and just you know, scratch my head and you know, if, um, but I just feel like there just needs to be I think more investment in black owned production companies um, mm, and more black led so projects going yes. on, and not not the tokenism, not you know, a lot of production companies or stories to just hire the one black person as a producer or a writer or yeah. you know put black people on screen but then you look through the pipeline and you see that there is no other diversity um mm. in the crew and and all of those things like mr jane and finch is mr jane and finch because it was led by two black women um mm. our editor was a black woman sonia Godding togobo amazing editor yes um yes <laughs> you know our, our dp mark valino he's filipino canadian like just the diversity we had you know we and we made sure down the road you know our sound um our composer orrin isaacs one of the most prolific composers in canada wow. um in you know in in our in our media industry you know um black man you know so it's like the diversity um behind the camera not just in the director or the producer but uh, amongst all the, the yes, different craft roles. and technical, and, yes, you know, right. it, it influences the the vibe of the film, <laughs> yeah. the flavor of the film, the film. And, <laughs> and all those little nuances that go on. You know, yeah. that it's 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 it. I think it cannot be achieved if there's just like one black person in one role, and then stop dusting no us in. <laughs> yeah. Right, um, that authenticity Rippling. will be missed. Um, yeah, so I think if more productions, you know, kind of look at how you can diversify holistically and not just um in a, in a token way yeah i think um, is really really important yeah did you want to add to that allison no that's you know <laughs> i agree i agree <laughs> <laughs> oh beautiful so um what is the future for mr jane and finch as as it the film you know um distribution you know that kind of thing networks like what's what do you feels on the horizons for it or still like maybe a festival run that kind of thing or mm -hmm. continuing festival run or yeah it's still it's still doing festivals it's still doing festivals it's um right now you can see it in canada on cbc gem um, Wonderful. so it's there and then also through the educational system it's being distributed by uh, mcintyre media and so Wonderful. anybody who wants to purchase it for educational use can go to their website and find the film among some of our other um, um, projects. And um, and we're still looking for uh, inter um, international, um, uh, I guess, distribution, especially in the American side. It, it, I would love to see it broadcast in, in America, on, a, on an American network, because the festivals that it has um, screened um, at in America, it's screened at, at a few, um, including Bronze Lens Film Festival and Black Star Film Festival in, in Philadelphia. And that it's the, um, the Q and A's at, at those festivals and hearing the response from the audience. Um, we also um, had it screened at Morehouse College um, doing Black History Month last year um, through the Council General um, uh, in, in Atlanta. Um, and it was just incredible to see how American audience is connected to it. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I've I had on more than one occasion people say, "Oh, like I had one guy who missed the opening of the film, and he thought he was watching a film about Chicago." Oh yeah. wow! Yeah, <laughs> like, it's, like the, the Black Americans connect to it. You know, I had someone joke and be like, "Oh well, Canada was our plan B to 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 you know skip out if things don't go well with the election." <laughs> I don't know now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like jokes like like that but you know they like there's such a genuine connection to the american audience and i feel like our film i wish um uh our film could be broadcast to um, yeah. the masses in america because i think um can, black canadian experiences um get so often overlooked because you know the black american experience is you know um they have a larger population and so it's, yeah. it's more prominent and i think um our 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 specific black Canadian experiences need to be shared, uh, yes. not just in Canada, definitely in Canada, but then also internationally and especially to our cousins in America. <laughs> it's like, it's so great yeah. how film can talk 
talk to communities right and and you know the themes of like gentrification and you know uh, a neighborhood that's been oppressed you know social with social economic you know issues and 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 you know it's just so interesting to see how the american audience is just like they're just in the film and and they know the people like you know Mr. Mm -hmm. Rose, who are that who's that community activist that's, that everybody knows and goes to if they have an issue and they know how to you know get it to you know a certain politician or you know, a pastor <laughs> yeah, or whatever. Everybody knows one. that community, <laughs> all of those people. So they kind of yeah. saw you know um, themselves in him as well, um, mm -hmm. and then just also the the overall like you know global kind of you know, inspiration of like, who do we want to be as people, you know, just being inspired by him and his life, you know, that, you know, that crosses a lot of different um, sort of, you know, you know, countries and, you know, and communities and, you know, um, it's just a very good film about inspiration. And, you know, you don't have to stop when you're, when you reach a certain age, you know, <laughs> young at heart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, lovely. And it's it's also like, you know, when, when watching it, you just see, I, I feel like the um, relatability is, is probably due to the respect you see when everyone speaks his name, you know, and, and when he comes in the room, you have that, that heightened level of respect and, you know, all of that comes, like, I think that's just amongst our folks, like our heritage. So it doesn't matter where you're showing this, they can relate to it because it doesn't matter what a youngin's going through. You know, there's always someone senior elder in our communities that we can turn to. So just speak about that and just like, do you like the different ways that, that folks relate to the film through just being in our, as a part of our diaspora. Like, I think that's a large part of it. <laughs> just the way that, just how we do, you know, <laughs> that matriarch, yeah. you know, our grandmamas, our grandpapas. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, that, the, the, the aunties, the uncles, yeah. <laughs> you know, that whole, you know, grand, grandma, grandpa, you know, you know, the fact that, you know, we, our community, no matter where you go, um, you know, if there's a child on the street and they're doing something that they're not supposed to do, somebody from our community is going to tell them about it, right? And they're going to have to listen. Like we just grow up in that kind of you know, way. Um, yes. And and I think it comes from like our, our long history of, you know, chiefs and queens and, mm -hmm. um, you know, and Gaddy could probably talk a lot more about this because, you know, she's, you know, her folks are from Sierra Leone and there's yes. a chiefdom system there and just the sense of community and, you um, connecting you know you're not just you know you're not just a, a solo entity with you and your family you're part of a larger community and the whole idea of respecting elders because they're the knowledge keepers right mm -hmm. and um, how knowledge gets passed down and and if you look at you know mr larose um mr larose that's his real name <laughs> um mr larose um, you know, he's been a knowledge keeper using technology, you know, and that's interesting for an older man to be, you know, have that much footage and all that. So it, it, it kind of, uh, his passing down of the knowledge, we always talk about him passing the knowledge down to us through, through film, through technology. And that's interesting. Beautiful. Yeah. And, I, and I also feel like you, we, and we showed in the film, he also passes that knowledge down through the mentorship. Um, and you see that with all the, the student, the placement students he has in his office uh, that um, are really pretty much his staff. Okay. Um, and, and that's how um, a lot of the community work happens is he, he's, um, uh, he takes placement students from, I think all of the college and universities um, in Toronto that have social studies, community service, um, social justice programs. And those students are embedded in his office and are, you know, pretty much like on the front lines, um, work with pe working with people in the community and, and they learn and they learn right away. And it was great um, getting to know some of those placement students. I think um, uh, her name is Shireen um, in, the, um, in the film. Um, when we see her quite often and, you know, even his camp, some of his campaign team are volunteers and they're young people, you know, who volunteer, um, who believe in him. And um, yeah, and I think it just goes back to, 
you know, just the way our community functions with that knowledge transfer um, yeah. from elders to, um, to to younger folks. And, um, you know, and, and for me, just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a child of Sierra Leone. That's uh, where I was born and where my family's from. And, you know, my grandmother, um, my, my late grandmother is a, you know, was a chief in, you know, in the, in the village that our family comes from, you know, and I'm, I always tell my mom, when is she going back to claim, for, to claim her chiefdom? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, they're literally now, you know, passing that on to the next person to, you know, take take on the role. So, you know, there's but there's there's something about elder respect, and that's something that that's that's very um, that was ingrained with me um, as from the time I was I was a child. You know, an elder respect to like if someone is a minute older than you, they're your elder, <laughs> and there, there's a level of respect you must pass on to them. Um, you know, growing up, I could never hit my siblings, but they could hit me because I was the youngest. <laughs> you know, I couldn't hit them back, but they could hit me. But they could only hit me if there was a reason. You know, and uh, and that was you know, so it was just like <laughs> you know, so elder, that was installed in me from like a young age. You know, and so uh, I have a tremendous respect for for elders, and and I love to to see that, and I love to to share that because I think that's something that as a community we cannot lose. Um, right. and um, is important to to honor beautiful and and just just the way that um he commands the space without having to say too much you know that doesn't have to raise his voice doesn't have to you know that this 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 is the the oh i, I don't know <laughs> what, what to call that it's just so admirable to be able to command the room without having to say just too much just enough <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm, I'm glad that resonated with you because it was those little things that I wanted to um, show as like, because he's not an activist who's like on the front lines with the posters and the blow horn. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not that, you know, it's, it's these little things. It's the way he just stands in the room and lets everyone speak. And then with, with that cool beret on, yeah. <laughs> well dressed and, man, <laughs> right? And his, you know, and his, and, and it with his like superhero uniform of his, you know, his his suit and his tie and his hat, right? Every day, that's how he comes and that's how he looks, you know, and and um and just and and it's like those little nuances were just were so important for 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 people to see, you know. So I'm glad that 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 um, that resonated Thanks. with you. Did a good that job. That was Gaddy. Gaddy was like. <laughs> Yeah, he's like he's got to be cool. Like, he's cool. <laughs> so we gotta preserve that, right? Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. So, um, gosh, I mean, this we don't have enough time for the questions that I want to ask. Um, but also, what's on the horizons for Oya oh yeah, Media Group? You know, um, I sometimes I like to ask uh, female um, filmmakers, do you have ideas for like, um, like, have you, your secret idea for the kind of like genre you might want to do next or or ever do you know do you want to do a horror film do you want to do a futurism film anything like that like what's on the horizons for the organization as a whole would you move into feature narratives that kind of thing yeah i mean right now <laughs> i'm not sure how much we want to reveal but uh, <laughs> right now we, we do have we have quite a slate of uh, projects in in development um uh, with one, uh, we are, our, our next feature documentary is, um, going into production. Hi, um, congratulations. And, um, yeah. thank you. So, and, um, in terms of, uh, genre, I mean, we can go into detail about some of those projects, but in terms of genre, yes, we're not just documentary. Uh, we are, um, expanding into factual, into, um, into drama, um, into fictional space. We're also in the digital immersive space into VR um uh production so yeah we we're um yeah we 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 do have a full gambit of it all uh -huh. um so yeah so uh, should we should we talk about a few of our our, our projects that are coming down the pipeline <laughs> don't sure, you go much. for it don't, no, just a little bit just a little, just a little bit yeah. so um <laughs> so the our our feature documentary that's going in production is called mothering in the movement um, uh, currently, the, the name uh, the name um, might might um, change as we, we go forward, but it's an uh, incredible <laughs> um, documentary uh, that's directed by um, a amazing uh, filmmaker slash educator, um, Lori Lori Townshed, um, and uh, it's about um, uh, Stacey Ann Chin, who's an American 
um, a prolific dub poet, activist, um, uh, uh, mom, and um, it's kind of a, a coming of middle age story that uh, is it's her exploring the relationship she has with her own mother who abandoned her as an infant. Uh, and she's reconciling that as she raises her own daughter, uh, uh, Zuri, uh, who is quite the little activist in the making. <laughs> um, and um, Stacey Ann is just an outspoken, um, you know, she's this uh, 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 very, very animated. Uh, she's, a, uh, she's a lesbian poet based in Brooklyn. And you know she's been on Oprah, she's been on Deaf Comedy Jam, um, um, on their poetry prolific. jam. Prolific. She's prolific. Uh, she just released a, a <laughs> book. Um, she's just, you know, she's she's led the, the um, Women's March, um, and just very outspoken in the way she lives. And a lot of that you see um, through the way she raises her daughter. So it's just a um, a, a beautiful film that um, we are going to go on a journey with her um, as she explores this really um, painful part of her own life. Um, and um, and her coming to um, a reconciliation, um, I guess, with her mother to to look at how she raises her own daughter. Is that a, is that a good way? I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, just, I just want to add the Canadian connection to that is when her mother left her in Jamaica as a little girl, she came to Canada. So oh, we're yeah. going to be showing a little bit of, you know, migration patterns and but her mom had a really mysterious life in Canada. So that's the oh. Canadian connection. And so, yeah, there's a lot to unpack in this one. It's going to be amazing. It's a great ride. Um, and, um, you know, we're we're um, our partners right now is the NFB, the National Film Board and CBC um, with the Doc Channel. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Well, <laughs> have fun on those shoots. <laughs> <laughs> Are you usually um, yeah, um, yeah. shocked by like some of the, you know, you go in with your story, but then a bit more new story comes out and emerges out of, you know, some footage, you know, you, what's, what do they say? You shoot a thousand hours and you come up with <laughs> what right. to present to the world. So are you sometimes like, surprised or happily surprised by new stories that are coming out of what you're working on or not even new stories but just hidden stories i guess that you didn't expect to find um are you saying once we're working on the documentaries um yeah, just that we any, find any yeah, oh. yeah 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 you know it just seems like you know it's funny how one film gets connected to another there's always something about a film you know, you know, the Ku of Benjamin project to, you know, Mr. Jane and Finch, uh, the Mr. Jane and Finch um, with his archives. Now we understand that Stacey Ann, um, Stacey Ann has an archive of her own of unseen seen footage. Like there's always something about a project. <laughs> and I think every project just makes you more and more aware of the possibilities of the story and the storytelling. Um, you know, when you're in a, inside of a documentary, you have to be open as far as, well, this is what I think, you have to be open to the, the twists and, and turns of, of of life, because if you're capturing life, you know, life is not predictable, you know, mm -hmm. so you have to be open to that and, um, and understand, you know, um, how something that you might not want to do could be a really central part of your story. So you have to really be extra, you know, open. You can't be close-minded and say, oh, I don't want to, if the story does this, I'm not going to capture that. No, you can't do that because you might be um, hindering the, the production from a really great layer of information or a great twist in the story. So you have to be really open. Um, but I'm always amazed at how one production kind of like, influences the other i don't know that's how i feel gabby what do you think i don't know <laughs> yeah i mean for me there's always this um uh quote i heard once listening to a podcast i don't know who said it um uh but it it goes something along the lines of like if you end the story if you if at the end of your documentary process um you you end with the story you started with then you weren't listening along the way Exactly. And, yeah. and I kind of feel like every documentary I've ever worked on, 
has always been that way where you know you have to pay attention and you have to kind of go with it you don't fight it you kind of just listen like mr like mr jenna finch started out about uh, as a documentary about an archive and it ended up as a documentary about a um an election to fight against gentrification for a beloved community um and you know speak. we weaved his archive <laughs> in the story you know and you still see it there um but we were able to dig and um and find um a, a, a fuller story you know and, and and that kind of goes through every um film i've worked on and it's kind of you have to go with it you have to listen you have to be open and you have to kind of accept all these new things you know what i mean you still have your vision right and you still you know you're not just kind of like following everything you see but you have to be open to see like these little nuggets and these little um just these little added additions that just make your story sweeter um yeah lovely <laughs> and, and he he made that change right when we were we already started filming we already had a significant <laughs> yeah we have, we have the green light <laughs> we have the green light we already started filming and i remember the day when gaddy came back to the office and she's like oh my gosh, you won't believe this. He's running for public office. What should we do? Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to follow two stories. And that's what he basically did. Yeah. To her credit, like she followed the, you know, the political running for office story and his, you know, what are we discovering in the archive? What is the, you know, story? And that's why it's so layered and poignant. So congratulations, Gaddy. You did an amazing yeah. job. <laughs> well, they can only take half the credit, you know. Allison, you did kind of, you kind of were around, weren't you? <laughs> uh, I love hearing that. Like, to take us through the process of like, the nor normally when you when you um, start produce something, like, is it normally a year and a half, two years? It has to take you know a couple of years to do, or sometimes something gets finished up a little earlier. Sometimes it takes up a story a little longer. So do you normally try to process it within a certain time frame, or you just let it do its thing? I mean, I know that's sometimes funders say you got to get this done in two years or a year. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we let it do, do its thing a little yeah. bit too long. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but, you know, that's how, who we are. We want to get, we want to tell like a meaty story. We want to, we want the story to not be su superficial, you know? Um, and so, you know, hopefully it takes like maybe two or three years, but we have projects that, you know, may have taken a little longer. Um, and also your, you know, it depends on, you know, the funding that comes in, if you have your, your fully financed and, you know, that kind of thing, you can go probably, you know, quicker at the door, but um, some things just do take longer because it just is a good stew and you just gotta make that stew cook a little longer if you want it to taste like the way you want it to taste. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. Mm. Yeah, and, I, and I also think like just, um, I think it also depends on like getting to know, like I, we spent a year getting to know Mr. The Rose before we even pulled out a camera, before we even pitched it to CBC. Um, you know, like it was just because I, he was a stranger, right? And I'm not going to have a stranger's trust. I'm not going to get him to, um, be open and honest and, you know, tell his deepest, darkest secret to me as a stranger. Yeah. He can only do that if I'm a friend yes. or if I'm, you know, um, you know, on a, on a, I have a built a relationship with them. So for me, my approach to filmmaking is you can only tell really deep layered stories when you've built those relationships um, or else you're going to get that stock answer that anybody would give when they when the camera's in their face. Right. You have to make them you have to get to a point where they don't even notice the camera and they trust you and they trust your intention and they know yeah. that you what you know that you're you are going to um you know treat their story because this is their story this is their lives he has to go on and live his life every day with what we've done out there in the world yes. right and so he has to be at a place where he trusts that I will do his story justice with respect and with dignity and without exploiting it um, and exploiting his story. I mean, there's parts of a story that I could have exploited and sensationalized, um, you know, and, and those were the most difficult moments of his entire life that he, this, he, he exposed us to and he shared with us. And, um, and even some of those moments in the film, we didn't shoot to the very end of the production because I wanted to make sure that he was 
comfortable enough and felt safe enough in the space um, um, I created to do so. So yeah, so like, you know, let it burn, let it take the time it needs. You know, you give it the time it needs. You know, sometimes you can make a film fast if you, especially if you already have a relationship established with the person that you're gonna tell the story on. But other times you might need more time. And also timing is everything. Sometimes what's happening yeah. in people's lives might not be the time that you want to film, right? So. <laughs> yeah, we yeah we worked in as you know documentarians and you know like producers and editors for a long time, and we wanted this film to be kind of constructed in a way that it was more than just a soundbite. <laughs> Hi, Simon. <laughs> um, just, just Gaddy, like the way that you described. Um, gaining uh, Mr. LaRosa's trust and just the entire way you describe that process should be a politician's platform. <laughs> I was just very intently listening and I'm like, everything that you said is is the way that, um, I think that's, that's probably why he finished six. <laughs> you right. know, could we speak to that? Like, I mean, the cell, did you stick around for the celebration of that and just like what that meant because that's it's a huge city so to come in six <laughs> you know like uh, i'm sure they wanted him to come in first but that's a big deal that's a lot of people mm -hmm. what that amounts to be yeah i mean it was i mean he wanted more and i think um another thing i think the film was to show is how much money plays a factor into to the voting and and how much that plays uh, into how you kind of can get your message out there to the people, um, you know, like the delay in him getting signs up, but everyone else being able to have signs up because they had the financial means to do so, of course, um, yeah. you know, and then just the the, the grassroots efforts that that he took um, uh, uh, to run. So um, yeah, I think I think there was there was a lot of uh, uh, difficulties there, and and. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, he did, he, from his placing, he, you know, he wanted more votes, obviously he wanted more votes to, 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 to get there. And then also, I think it said a lot about the, like, if you look at the numbers of the amount of people in that, in the community that voted, I think the voting turnout was maybe 40% or less. It's one of the lowest voter turnouts in the, in the city. And I think that's a, a reflection of just the, the feeling that people have of, you know, the, the, the the lack of of changes that happen in the community mm -hmm. um and the way changes actually happen in the community where it doesn't really happen truly at least in my opinion through the political process like the jane and finch community probably per capita has um the one of the highest amounts of community organizations wow wow yeah it's there's there's so many community organizations um like the Jane and Finch action um, uh, against poverty. Like there's so many organizations in the Jane and Finch community because they've been left on their own, on their own devices because of the lack of political will um, and um, and a political attention um, given to the neighborhood. It's like people like Mr. The Rose. He was the one who brought, and, and it was really funny because when they had debates um, with the other um, candidates, uh, the one long-standing um, city councilor, or the two long-standing city councilors, because they amalgamated the ward, um, uh, and that was a whole other issue in the in the film. But the, the the both of them had been in power. One had city councilor, I think, had been in power for the past fifteen or sixteen years. One over ten years. A lot of the times where they would talk about, well, I did this for the community and that for the community. They had to like preference it well mr larose brought it to us and then i pushed it through <laughs> <laughs> and it was hilarious he did because, all like, the work and then i just got the credit <laughs> exactly yeah. exact, right so like so much they talk about oh well you know i brought the this boys and girls club to the community or this community center and you know and then they have to say well mr larose brought it to my attention and then i you know so it just it just it was such a, 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 a for me i just kind of I had to snicker to myself to be like yeah that's this is how the community works the community works through all these community organizations and and folks like especially like mr the rose and mr the rose um and um the one member of, of, of parliament um honorable judy scroll she even says in the film there really isn't anything that has happened in this community that mr the rose wasn't involved with oh amen my goodness yeah 
and, wow. and it's so true. And so, yeah, so as a community person, he does that, and then he brings it to the politician. So it's like, it was time for that change, but, you know. You know. Yeah, people were talking, people, I just wanted to add, people were talking that, um, because there's a great apathy in the area in terms of, like, voting, people were saying, like, if Mr. LaRose had, had uh, ran, like, 20 years ago, he would have won, and he would have probably still be in, in power. Yeah, but I think right. there was a feeling that he was getting he was he was getting too old, even though he could run a hundred yard dash or meter dash and like, mm -hmm. you know, and still compete with the young young people that he Well, was, hello Biden. Yeah. Biden's not yeah. necessarily twenty. I know. <laughs> exactly. Sorry, Biden. Biden, but, right? <laughs> well, ladies, it was so amazing to get to know you, to meet you virtually, to talk about your beautiful film. Congratulations again for the success of it. Um, I just want to give you the opportunity to leave us with just a few words, like the responsibility that we have as filmmakers, you have met that in this film and ju just to, on so many different levels. So congratulations again on that. And if you want to just leave us with a few words about maybe just, um, you know, what, again, what you want to see, the, what message you want to come out to people. It, for me, I just want to be able to tell our stories unapologetically and um, and do it in a way where we can also build community because for for us, you know, that's that just means so much. And um, I also want to just tell people that the, if they want to know anything more about what we're doing, you can follow us on our socials, uh, um, everything o at Oya oh yeah Media Group, um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Yeah. You can follow us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. Allison said it. I mean, I, I um, just want to continue making um, these stories and other stories. Nothing. It doesn't always have to be, you know, uh, around our fight and our struggle. You know, we can show Black Joy and um, just just the 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 multitude of, of our communities. Um, the stories we have to tell are so diverse and I just um, I'm just looking forward to being able to tell tell more um, and to tell them um, you know properly funded like look what happens when you properly fund a project you know <laughs> yeah get <these> awards. <laughs> you know, when, when we have the capacity <laughs> to just you know tell our stories without even having to worry about you know other things and um so i just hope we are able to continue to continue to do this and do and and, and do that more yeah and and follow us oya media group we have yeah. more much more coming down the pipeline and i want to thank the festival um st john's international women's Fest film festival i was invited back um a couple of years ago to be on a panel i know gaddy's been there on a panel on a virtual panel we'd love to come back and um yes. show more work at the festival lovely